This is a video on heat and thermal equilibrium. And I wanted to contemplate this warm-up question that we did in class um, before we start this lesson. If you were in class when we did this warm-up, you can just fast forward. If you drop a hot rock into a small pail of water, the temperature of the water and the rock will change until both are equal. The rock will cool down and the water will heat up. If the rock the heat from the rock will increase the temp of the water. But does the same principle hold true if you drop a hot rock into a swimming pool? Explain. So think about it. You can actually do this on your warm-up page. But our answer is yes. The only difference is the pool is so big, you hardly notice the change in temperature. But it is there. It's just the same amount of energy is being put into the water. We have so much more water that the overall temp change is tiny. Skip some of this practice, skip some of this. All right, today we will predict what direction heat will flow between hot and cold objects, and then start thermal equilibrium. So our vocab is thermal equilibrium, which is new, and heat. That's a demo we did in class that you won't get advantage of. So the question to start is, predict what direction heat will flow between hot and cold objects. Will the 20 degrees of heat leave the cold one and be added to the warmer one, which is example A, or the extra heat in the 80 degree one be transferred to the colder one till they become equal. Almost everyone in class said B. In other words, if we had this example, warm water neck touching a container of cold water, and you came back an hour later and one was boiling and one was frozen, you would be like, there's voodoo magic going on. Like, this doesn't happen. What really happens is the heat travels from the warmer object to the colder one until they equalize. And this is a metaphor for the heat flow. Heat flows from high energy to low energy. When This is the natural motion. You can make uh, things colder like a freezer, but that takes energy. So the first thing you know is heat only travels from hot to cold objects. So this is a big fat no, and this is a big fat yes. Please have these diagrams on your picture somewhere. This does not happen, this does. It equalizes. So the next assignment was to draw this picture. And it's not even a picture. This is a system. Draw this four object system. Add five more arrows to show the direction of the heat flow between the four objects. So, here's your answer. Always goes from hot to cooler. Another thing to add to your notes, heat can only transfer between objects, objects that are in physical contact. So when I'm holding the coffee cup, it can only be transferred between the cup and the part of my hand that's touching it. The coffee cup does not warm up my other hand. The air in the room can be heated by the coffee cup, and then that air can warm up my other hand, but we don't really notice that because the change is so small. So it's only transfer between objects with physical contact. So heat is the term given, this is review, of moving thermal energy or moving internal energy. Heat is passed from hot objects to another. We put heat into the water to make steam. 
The next vocab word is thermal equilibrium. When heat travels between objects until temperature equalizes. Just like we did here. Okay, systems are a chosen group of objects that will we will choose to observe the temperature change of. We can define our own systems. So this is a system that I gave you. This system is closed. We are only observing what's happening between these four objects. In reality, there are no closed, purely closed systems. This could be happening inside of a room with the air temperature of 20. And now we would have to count in warming up the air, the air in contact with this, that in contact with the air, and the air in contact with that. So when systems become open, they get more complicated. But you need to know that there's, and there could be even more. There could be the air outside, which is cooler, 15 degrees Celsius, warm, from the air, so systems can always get more and more open. So when you're describing a system, an open system means you're taking into account not only what we see, but also the immediate outside influences. And it can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Or we can say, we're observing the following closed system. Okay. That's all that you need. There's an assignment below where you have to diagram and create your own visual system and describe the heat flow between all the objects that are only in contact with each other. If the objects are not in contact, you cannot have heat transfer.